In the previous section, you saw how easy it was to create an ASP.NET dynamic data project. Simply select the appropriate item and it'll do most of the heavy lifting for you. In this section, we're going to talk about how we can create a data model that can act as the go-between between between the database and our website that has all the scaffolding to enable inserts, updates, deletes, and filtering operations. So you have two options when you create a model. We can go in and do schema first or model first type of design and I'm going to go ahead and just base our model on an existing AdventureWorks Lite database that I'm going to add to the project once I get to the demonstration. Now you could also choose link to SQL though. That is another model option that's available but because I did Entity Framework for the dynamic data project created earlier we're going to go ahead and go that route. So to do that I'm going to walk through the process of adding an ADO.NET Entity Data Model into our project. We'll walk through the wizard to select the database. That'll create a connection string for us automatically, so it's very, very simple. And then we'll simply check the checkboxes next to the appropriate tables that we'd like to expose. Now once we do that, an entity framework diagram will be created for us and it'll have the different tables that we'd like to expose. So in this case you can see we have address, sales order header, and some others. And whatever tables you select, that's what will be scaffolded out or rendered to enable our CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete using dynamic data projects. So it's actually very, very simple to get started with that. And let's go ahead and jump in and add in a database and then an entity data model into our dynamic data website. Before we can add a data model into our website, we of course need a database to base it on. Now if we were doing a model first, it would be possible to actually generate the database and I'd encourage you if you're interested in that to view the Entity Framework module in this video series. But what I'm going to do is add an AdventureWorks Lite database into our app data folder. Now if you already have a database either at work or a host that's provided, then you could certainly use that database as well. But we'll go ahead and add one. So I'm going to say add existing item. We'll select our database and that's a SQL Express database that we can now use. Now from here I need to be able to add in our Entity Framework model. If we were in a web application project I could create a subfolder or even put the model right in the root of the web application project. But because this is a website project and you'll know that by just simply looking at the name here, notice it starts with a drive path then we need to add in an app code folder. And that's where our model is going to go. So to do that, we'll right click on our project, go to add ASP.NET folder, and select app code. Now from here, I'll right click on app code, and we're going to add a new item. Now the item we'd like to add is this ADO.NET entity data model. And again, that will model our database and be used by the dynamic data scaffolding to automatically generate all the CRUD operations and pages for us. So we'll go ahead and name this after the database AdventureWorks Lite.edmx. Let's go ahead and add that in. And now it's going to ask us to, to either start with an empty model or to base it on a database. Now, since I added the database, we'll go with that route. You can see it picked it up automatically. It made the appropriate connection string for an entity framework uh, connection and model. We'll hit next and now it's going to go out, query the database, and we can simply select the tables that we'd like to expose to be edited. Now if I'd like all tables, I can just check the checkbox and that would make all tables available. Uh, this sys diagrams one I probably don't want though. And everything else looks pretty good. I think build version we can probably do with, uh, without as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select all the others though and hit finish. Now this will generate the diagram that I showed earlier. And whatever's on this diagram can now be used to actually go in and work with dynamic data. So it actually makes it very simple. So there we have our model. You can see all the different tables that were uh, selected. And if we needed to update it, if the database changes, we can right click and say update model from database and run through the wizard again. To makes, which makes it very easy to work with. So that's how we can add a model into a website type of project. Now again, if you're doing a web application project, you don't have to create the app code folder. You can just add this EDMX file anywhere you'd like in the project. So the next step is, now that we have a model, 
we need to register that model with this dynamic data website. So let's take a look at how we can do that.